Alright guys, so this is a long-awaited, <laughs> long-awaited part 2 of One Fall, um, so part 1 we did Detroit Smash, you know it came out pretty nicely, we also added sound, um, and I was gonna do Carolina Smash, but that just seems kinda iffy and bad, not fun and exciting. So we're gonna do full Colin instead. So we're gonna do make a local script. You already know the drill. Full Colin. I'm gonna get your local player, aka your player. Alright, now we're gonna get the replicated storage. AKA where we're gonna put our remote events. Um, I'm gonna duplicate this, call this full. Local full to IP. A child full, so I'm just checking back to this. Um, yep, okay. We're gonna use user input service. Oh no, not instant. <laughs> Game, that is input service. Not user service. User input service. There we go. Debounce. And cooldown, let's say cooldown is. I don't even think we want to do a cooldown, should we do a duration? Yes, we can do a duration. And this will last for three seconds. For me, it could last like however long, or you could use like energy or whatever for yours. But yeah. And put begin. Calling connect function input aka the key that you type or press is typing that makes sure that if you're typing the move can interact or can be activated. Say Kikoda C. Alright, now for some people this is a bit confusing because they don't know how to change keys. So, say if you just wanted like a regular keyboard press, then you can just change C to, I don't know, spacebar. You want Alt, you could do left Alt, right Alt, you could do literally anything. Um, if you want to do a mouse click, then you would do else if input dot user input type input type and this is um I believe the gamepad is like the Xbox stuff. Uh gyro is phone um Keyboard, I guess keyboard is there, and the mouse buttons, and mouse movement stuff, and touch for phones as well. And you can do that. Uh, uh, let me see. Mouse button one is left click, two is right click, three is the scroll wheel click. So yeah. All right. So now we're gonna do if events. Do the fast within. Bounce if you're true. You want to do four file server. You want to do duration because that's how long the uh, mobile is gonna last or the transformation. Okay, so now with server script service, we're gonna make a script. We 
can call this full cow as well. You can call it full cow server script and this one a local script. So yeah, it's never gonna copy this to the video DC. Paste that. You wanna do full on server event clone connect function player so whenever you do a on server event uh, function the first parameter will always be player um, and then whatever you send in the fire server is like the second or however many you have next I'm gonna call this duration just checking to make sure that it's there okay so for this now we want to get the player's character so in order to do that we need to do local character you put a player dot character and uh we can do human node as well so local human node is equal to character fit for child humanoid um I did this because we're gonna add an animation in so yeah let me make the animation now well before I do that make a folder do animations I don't think I'm gonna do like a, a lot of meshes or anything with it so I'm just give it this uh, we're gonna put an animation yeah. I'm gonna do charge. Okay, so now make your animation. Um, also, a lot of you guys wanted these to be in the description. So instead of doing like the, the scripts in the description, I'm gonna make it so you can see the scripts. And then uh, you can only download the meshes. Cause I think the mesh, give you all the meshes, it's fine. You know, not a lot of people can make those, so. Um, you make the animation. Alright, so now I've got my animation. Put animation priority to action. Export. I'm gonna call this full call. And people, like, alright, so when you guys, like, say what's the ID or whatever, think of this link as the ID. So you will copy it. Close it up and go to the animation object inside of the script or the folder in my case and paste it there and just click enter and it converts this to that. So now we have the animation. Um, let me do this. Okay, so then we're gonna do at the top, we're gonna reference the 
animation folder. So animation equal to script. I'll wait for chat. Animation. We want to do local charge equal to him. Colon mode animation. Animation dot charge. Charge colon play. So this will play our animation. Um we test. Yeah, we test. This should work and show the animation. One the last one. Longer. So and, uh, copy this keyframe, just make it a bit longer. Do that. Uh, let's re export it. Full oh. call. Now, if we test it, okay, that's nice. That's a lot better. Um, what's next? So we're gonna get like the the glow is gonna be like a, a greenish glow around the character. And actually I'll teach you this as well. So some people get tripped up when I do glide equals V and Tails character that gets children. Like you you don't understand like what this means and stuff. Think of I as your counter. And take a V as the object in the character. So we're gonna keep it like this actually just to make it make it more readable. I'm gonna call this count actually. Just to simplify it. So I is count. V is the ob objects and character. Um so now what we're gonna do is we wanna create a sort of like green like neon outline around the character so what we're gonna do is clone the parts weld them to the player but we have to also remove like the um, motor sick stuff and like all of the uh, I don't want to say welds but like all the attachments and stuff that is inside the, uh, the limbs so what we're gonna do is let's say local Outer, it's called an outer. Is equal to objects. Well, first we gotta make sure we're cloning parts of each part. So if objects is a mesh part or object is a part, then and we want to ignore the human human or root part. So what we're going to do is if objects dot name is not equal to humanoid root part, then we're going to clone the object in the character. So we're going to do local outer is equal to objects dot clone will call and call so now what I wanted to do is remove the um like this stuff that's inside the limbs so we're gonna use like a simple small function of outer dot clear of uh, children and that will just remove unwanted stuff that's inside of it alright then we're gonna do look outer dot c frame is equal to object Dot C frame. I'm gonna do outer dot size. As you can outer size plus vector three dot one because the vector three value. But I do it by point one just to get like that slight glowish, like not the slight glowish, but that slight deviation from the character to see the glow. 
And now we're gonna pick like a neon color. Uh, we don't want it to like cover up like the arm. Like you want to be able to see the body. We're gonna change the transparency to about 0.8. And then we're gonna use. Hmm, gonna make it brighter. I'm gonna use a bluish green. So something like. Blue. Yep, something like this. Okay, the mint. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna keep this, right? Go here. Outer dot color. This is the color of three dot from RGB. One, two, one, two, five, five, one, five, nine. And then we're gonna do local outer dot parent is equal to object. Now we have to weld the the glow to the character, aka like stick it on. So we're gonna just call this weld to get in instance that new manual weld. Weld that part zero, aka the part that's being welded. So that will be outer. Weld that part one is equal to the part that we're welding part zero two. So now we're gonna do C O aka I believe this is a C frame and we're gonna do outer dot T object space change this weld dot part zero dot C frame is equal to well not equal to that two object space so we're setting the object to the object well we're setting part zero C frame to pretty much part one C frame I'm gonna do well that part one about C frame well, the parent is always so the weld's parent is always equal to part zero. So now that we have this, um, I want to. Okay, so we're gonna have an error with well, not an error, but like a weird thing with the head because heads on Roblox characters are actually one by two, as you can see. Also, see. Uh, so we do this. Also, wait. Before I do that, let's make sure to make cam come live. Make it a false. Outer dot mass with is equal to true. Um. So if we try it. Oh, wrong key. Oh, it actually looks dope. Oh, no, holy crap, that looks so strange. Okay, now we gotta figure out why this is not working. Um, hmm. Parent this first after clone. Hmm, I think so. I look at this right. Two objects space. Oh, not dot two object space. Colon two object space. Then we can put this back down here. So if we do this, it's not neon yet or transparent. So we just got that. But you can see <laughs> I'm covered in yeah the green parts. 
So we gotta make a separate thing for the hair this week. So we're gonna do for this one. I'm gonna finish this off by doing outer dot transparency is equal to point no let's do point seven five. Outer dot we already did the color. Outer dot material is equal to enum dot material dot neon. So if you touch it down it should be shiny. Or at least give the like glow effect. So mm, see? So glow effect. Nice one. And I'm going to make this smaller. So it's a bit more thin. Yeah, I like that. We're gonna add lighting as well. Just give me a moment. Alright, so hid. In order for me to do this, what I'm gonna do is duplicate the head off of a dummy. And uh Yeah, let's just move the dummy over. Take this head, right? Uh, we're gonna export it into Blender, so I'm just call this head from Roblox. Go on to Blender. I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna do import OVJ. Documents, find hair from Roblox. Then we're gonna set the geometry to origin. Now we have the head. So now what we're gonna do is just export as FBX head from Blender. Select the objects, make sure we don't hit more than one object. Or export more than one object. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Okay. So now we have the mesh part, right? From part one. I'm just gonna take one of those. I'll find head from Blender. Yes, no. Oh, look at this head. Huge head. I hope it doesn't have the face on. Okay. We're just gonna call this head. We're gonna make it one by zero one. Actually, one point zero one by one point zero one by one point zero one. Now we're gonna drag this into. Oh, Excuse me, full cow. Should we? I mean, we're only doing one. Eh, sure. Alright, meshes. I'm gonna pull the head into meshes. I'm gonna come up here, look at mesh. Let me put a script that way for child. Meshes. And now we're gonna do and object. Dot name is not equal to head, so this first part ignores head, and then we're gonna do else if objects dot name is equal to head. Then we're gonna copy all of this from um. We're gonna pretty much remove all of this. Uh, we to make it easier, we can. Well, nah, we'll still call it that. Want to do meshes that we a child head. So then we don't need that part. Uh, see, frame should be good. We don't need to change the size because we already made it to size. Everything is good with that. 
So now if we test it, this should work. Okay, so I see the head part right. Seems like we got to make it bigger. So what we're gonna do is set the size. Set the size equal to objects that size is vector three. That you point one point one point one just gonna try out with a different couple of values so I'm gonna do that right so so this should actually be huh I can make this record three that new so two two is gonna be one one one, and let's make it bigger actually. One point five by one point five by one point five. We're just gonna resize it down. It's too big. Yep, it's too big. So we're gonna do one point two five. We're just gonna add a two in front of that. Play. Bam. This one seems super bright compared to the rest of the body. Let me try something. Else. Let me try point two. We might turn down. The, we'll turn up the transparency if it's too bright. Bam. Yeah, we'll tune up the uh, thing to uh, 85. Alright, that's fine. Not gonna spend too much time on it. Alright, well, it looks like he has like an under chin. Looks weird. Do 1.2. 1.22 for all three sides just to get rid of that like chin part all right this is fine we'll take it so now when it comes to deck going full call yeah we just need particles so let's make a folder I'm gonna call this Articles. And now we're just going to take a, a part. And then instance. Well, not instance, but insert object. Particle emitter. Now we're going to find a lightning um, decal. So I'm going to just look on Google or something. Alright. We're back. Okay. So now that I'm a lightning. Looks pretty good. Uh, if you want the lightning ID, just look at that. I'll put it up on screen as well. Uh, probably right here. But yeah, so after we get that, I'm gonna drag this into particles. Then we're gonna use that for loop again. And I guess we can use. Yeah, we can use these still. So we're gonna drop a few lines. We're gonna do local lightning is equal to particles. I don't think I referenced particles up here. So if I go right here, do particles. You go to script on the chat. Alright, so we reference particles. Um, so we come back down here. Wait, watch out. Effect. 
Parent is object and character, aka whatever the the object is while it's going through the loop. And now um, we can copy this. Do we want it in the head? Yeah. Let's see. Now I'm gonna test it. It's probably a bit too much. I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna reduce this. About 15. Okay, that's a lot more team. Um, I want to make these. Okay, so now I want like the timing. You want the timing because you don't want them to just burst into it. Like you want them to burst into it, but at like a certain time, and this will be that certain time. Um, we're gonna name this keyframe. We're gonna rename it to charge. Well, no, we don't want to use the same name. Effects. We can use effects, right? And we can re export this to full call. Then when we come back in this, we can do charge dot keyframe reach. Excuse me. Reach. And connect function and what's over in this parameter is the name of that keyframe so we named it uh, effects bam so now we can copy this whole loop remove it from the row and we can place it inside this function let me just space it out Okay, so now let's test it. And yes. Okay. And I think it's going to be that neon. Test. Let's go to like. a lot less awesome it's still so bright we do like 0.99 yeah, you can see it but barely you see 9.5 Okay, that's fine. That matches. Alright. So now, we're gonna do the camera shake like we did here. So honestly, we can copy this. I'll explain up. I'll explain this. Um, give me one second. Open this script back up. Okay, so I'm going to re-explain this. Pretty much it gets the character of our player, it gets the humanoid, then it runs a loop 30 times, aka the shaker, and these are the values for um, how strong the shaking would be. So if you want something like super strong, then 
you can do like large numbers and if you want some like super subtle super small you can do smaller numbers but make sure they're the same but one of them is negative the other is positive and this is the camera offset pretty much this part moves the camera it knows where it is and the weight is just there so it doesn't go all that much and it sets it back to zero after it's done um, so now we're gonna have to come here and we're gonna do full uh, function full dot one client is it call connect function like that we're gonna do wait yeah we're gonna have a cool down actually Let's make a cooldown as well. Let's say cooldown is 5 seconds. Okay, so it's gonna wait 5 seconds before setting the bells by default. Um, now we're gonna come here in the uh, replicated storage. We're gonna copy that or duplicate it. We're gonna call this full cam. And then we can just copy this. This one. Of course, if you're making a game, it's gonna be like more organized than this. This is just like showing you how to do it. Um, then we're gonna do four. Four. Can't die. One. Do camera shake. I'm gonna call that. I'm gonna come back here. And also for this, I'm gonna drop a few lines. I'm gonna do spawn function. I wonder if Roblox removed like that auto fill type thing. Where would auto put the in? But uh, besides that. Four can the fire client. I'm gonna send the play back. So it gets who pressed it and who to change his character, my camera, like whose camera to change. Um, So if we test it, should shake. Yeah, nice. We can have like, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna do effects. I'm gonna make this look smexy. All right. Uh, I'm gonna use these effects. I think I can. Um, let me see something real quick. I want to see if it's going to rotate correctly. It does. Okay. Um, let's tone this down a little bit. Um, let's make this the same color as this. Um, and I believe this has like a sort of texture you can give it. We're gonna try that. I'm gonna put that down. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, that looks god. You see like the lightning a little bit, and sometimes that's awesome.
That's the the Sean is not over there. Holy crap. Well, now it's on you. Gonna make sure it's anchored and can't come out at all. Now we're gonna drag this into meshes. Um, I'm gonna get it out of this way. I'm gonna do drop a few lines on that. Excuse me. We're gonna do wave, local wave, is equal to. Meshes, we put child. Wait, you want to do home? We use that C frame is equal to character that we put child, humanoid, root, part that C frame is equal to one of the already days. We want to do time C frame that near. Let's do zero, negative three, two. I think negative two would be fine. Um, wave dot orientation. I think it'll be the orientation plus vector three dot new negative mode zero zero. Then wave dot parent equal to make the characters appear. So if we check this, sponsor. So yeah, three. Three is the safe bet. Well, not safe bet, but you know. Good call. One last check. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so now we're going to do like not animated, but kind of sort of. I'm going to use tween service, which is, in my opinion, is like a smooth transition from a start point to a goal. And I'll explain the goal. Well, the goal is like the finished product or what it's going to be doing. So we're going to do this. I'm going to do local tool. Oh no, local goal. So this is the goal. That we not size. So we're going to set a goal size of wave dot size plus vector 3 is that new wave is at about 9 so let's say 10 or 10 2 no 1 so we're adding the size of the wave plus how much it's going to increase by we're also going to do a goal that orientation because of wave that orientation that's vector 3 that that new we're going to do 0 and we're going to do let's just do a large number and we're going to do one last goal which is transparency and transparency will be 1 so now we're going to do local info aka what the uh, tween do and we're just going to do the time so let's do 2 seconds 
go and do local tween, the little tween service, create wave while the, the object the object that you're trying to tween will always be the first parameter. Um, then info will be the next one, and goal will be the last. The ones between colon play. And let's test it out. Tween servers create no property name or in up. Misspell orientation. Orientation. Just make sure. Alright. Let's go. See how nice that looks? Whoa. You see that? That was actually an unattended <laughs> unattended effect. That's actually dope. Since we made it like the parent it to the character. So then when we do the uh the loop, it adds like electricity to it as well. That's dope. I don't like that though. Yeah, let me remove the uh texture from that. Okay. So now I'm gonna use the debris. The debris. Yeah, we're gonna add things to the debris. So local debris, this is our game, get service, debris. Pretty much will destroy anything. Um, we're gonna do debris, add item, wave. We're gonna do two seconds because that's how long the tween lasts and we want it to disappear after. Um we also wanna copy this and we're gonna paste it inside of both of these two. So we're gonna do this one for outer outer and we're gonna change that to duration and uh, gonna paste it in this one as well we're also gonna do it for lightning so uh, lightning copy this under lightning and uh, let's test it Okay. I don't know what that was actually. That was odd. Okay. So let's wait 15 seconds and then this all should disappear. And of course you can change the uh, duration to like using your energy or stamina or whatever but now we're gonna have to do the wait function but not wait but oh yeah the wait it's gonna wait until the move is completed before calling back to the debounce to do the cooldown so we're just gonna do fire client player and that's it so we test it can do it. Let's see, I'm pressing it, spamming it. We can't transform again. Um, I'm gonna wait. <sighs> cool down. It was like five seconds. Five should be over now. And bam, works. Now one more thing, because I know a lot of you are gonna like spam and be like, how to do this. So we're gonna make sure the player can't move while this is in progress, if that makes it. Um gonna do what speed to the zero. Human now jump power. Take the zero. So now I know a lot of you are going to be like, 
what I found is sprinting and stuff. So I'm gonna do previous speed to zero. I'm gonna set previous speed to here like that walk speed. So we save the previous walk speed that you had. I'm gonna make this Oh god, that was a voice crack. I'm gonna previous speed. Set previous speed to that. So then we're gonna do that. I'm gonna come in here and uh under the loop. So after the loop runs, then we're gonna do uh, humanoid that walk speed is equal to previous speed and humanoid dot jump power is equal to 50 because that's the default jump power. Uh, you can change it however you want, that's up to you. And uh, let's test. So now, can't move until after that's the jump power. Oh, made a location instead of that. Let me do a wait one second. Just, let me do that. Let me put this in the spawn function so it doesn't yield the uh, other weight. And it waits till most of the effects are gone. And done. And yeah, you got your full collar. Um. You know what, just a little bonus, because I made you guys wait so long. Uh, let's make it so it can affect the move's damage. Because why not? A little bonus is fun. <laughs> Alright, so if we go to Detroit Smash, right? I want to instance a number volume, right? We're going to call this damage. Because that will be the damage. So open up the choice smash. Come here where it says damage. Change that to script. Wait for child. Damage. And then where we're gonna see damage at in this script, we're gonna change this to gen damage out volume. Right. So the damage before was 50. So let's keep it as that. Um. Let's make a folder to keep this all organized. This could probably be done better with modules, but we're not using modules because just trying to keep it simple. So one for all. Let's just move both of these. No, not in there. Move them in the one for all thing. Go to full column. And we're gonna make a damage values it's gonna be local Detroit smash is equal to script uh, let me do this real quick local group is equal to script dot parent then we're gonna do local Detroit is equal to group with the child Detroit Smash and then oh, uh, also want to do it for child damage. Okay, so now this is getting this is the same thing as. this line, the damage line, okay? So now when we're in this, right? What we do is... Yeah, I'm gonna teach another thing as well after this. But uh, what I'm gonna do is... Detroit Smash dot value is equal to Detroit Smash dot value times multiply I'm 
Это у вас друга. Это я был вообще. Я say multiply is two times the damage. No, 1.5 times the damage, right? And uh, let's change Detroit Smash damage to 25, so we can see this. So this would be more. So this will multiply 25 by 1.5. Uh, going to wait. Okay. Um. So then we set the damage value to the damage value times the multiplier. And then we're gonna wait till after the duration, and we're gonna divide it so it goes back to its um original value. So now. If we test this, so let's test damage. You know, did about like one fourth of the health. Then, if we do four Calvin, then we're gonna do bam, did a lot of health. And it'll kill them. And now, yeah. So now, the other thing I want to teach you is how to make it so other scripts can't run while one of them is running. So let's, well, we'll call. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do it this way. We'll do that. We're gonna do a bull volume in here. I'm gonna call this enable. I'll bring these two in there. Just, just pretty much like organizing your scripts and stuff. Um, we're gonna open up both the local scripts. If we drop a few lines, we can do local enable. This is the script. Dot parent. Dot leave your channel. Enable for both. a few lines enable then we're gonna do down in here we're gonna do and enable that value is equal to false so as long as this is not enabled then you can use the move if it is enabled then you can't use it so then anytime we use this you know, like use a move if you want to set this to true and uh, depending on like the move is depending on where you just set it false so the choice smash you know as soon as you're done the move you can use another move so we're going to set it false right after so it doesn't leak for the cooldown for Carlin what we're going to do is so two seconds is like how long it takes for the transformation to be done. So we're gonna do wait two. Then we're gonna set enable that value is equal to false. So if we test this, then say I use the column and I'm spamming E as I did that. Wait, I can't even do it. Wait, that's why. Because it's a loop in that script, so it keeps running forever. Um, oh, I did this one wrong. I'm gonna copy this. Paste this. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a spawn function. We don't yield it, and while we're transforming, we can attack. As soon as we're done, we can attack. And, uh, yeah, awesome. All right, so I think this 
I think this is worth the wait. <laughs> Sorry again for making y'all wait, but I know this is recorded after. But uh, before I forget, these are the scripts. So uh, people that said they can't see it, there you go. long um if you like this video uh subscribe hit that like button uh hit that bell so like you don't miss any new updates whether it be a live stream a tutorial or whatever and um like i said at the beginning i'll make all the uh meshes downloadable um I'm gonna challenge you to make the animations yourself, even if it's bad, you know, give it a try. Cause you, you never know. You never know how it's gonna turn out until you try. Alright. Um, thanks for watching.